Anyone who's watched this channel before knows that I am no fan of the Chinese government. Now, I think it's always worth clarifying things here because I really do respect the cultural history of and the attitudes and work ethic of the Chinese people themselves, right? I've got no issue with China as a people group. But when it comes to the laws and regulations that their government passes, I do not understand how anyone could defend them, nor do I understand how any company could shill for the country's money. Especially when they espouse high morality and moral principles and being a great company that cares about people, a la Disney or other companies like that, which have been known to record in China, even in a province that is known for having what can only really be called a modern concentration camp for people of the Islamic faith and other faiths, including Christianity and other people being there. But... This new one really kind of takes the cake in terms of just stupid crap that China is pushing, especially with video games. Now, if you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe. Uh, this is probably a video that will get buried when people talk about China in any sort of negative way. Uh, it tends to disappear because every company wants a piece of that sweet, sweet, sweet Chinese money because of how many people live there. China is banning gay people in video games. Now, it, this is not the only thing they're banning. They're also banning moral choices. This was reported by Forbes and a lot of other websites as well because China is cracking down on video games with content that the state government deems immoral. So according to this leaked memo, games must have correct values in order to be approved by the Chinese government as well as an accurate understanding of Chinese history and culture. Now, to be honest with you, I hate censorship, but the one thing that I do understand out of the Chinese government is an accurate understanding of Chinese history and culture. I think it's sad to be threatened by fiction in general, but for a state government that is as prideful as the Chinese government always has been, I'm not surprised at that one. I am surprised a little bit at the amount they reached at with these other ones, as games that include same-sex relationships or effeminate males, which if you don't know what that would be, that would be males who are more feminine or have less, uh, how would I say this, less commonly considered masculine features. Maybe they have softer features, maybe they're soft-spoken, maybe they act more like the Chinese government would expect a female to act. Those types of games in which a character's gender is not immediately apparent are also banned, and if regulators can't tell the character's gender immediately, the setting of the characters could be considered problematic and red flags will be raised, is what the memo states. Now, games that allow players to make moral choices between good and evil paths are also on the chopping block. Some games have blurred moral boundaries, the memo states. Players can choose to be either good or evil, but we don't think that players that games should give players this choice, and this must be altered. I find this very amusing. What's really sad to me is that I could see some companies bending the knee and completely changing their game or changing things about what they're creating to try and get it into the Chinese uh, landscape. Now, this is something believe it or not, that we have seen already. It's a much smaller scale example that doesn't really hurt anyone. But one example I can think of um, is the German World War II symbol that has now become associated with hate and hatred that was used by the Yahtzees to, uh, as a basically a flag to wipe out anybody different than them uh, and push for world domination, right? A lot of that imagery is now banned in places like Germany, uh, because of what I would say is a scared overreach because they're afraid that allowing even that imagery anymore could promote the repetition of history, right? In a lot of ways uh, that something could happen again by allowing that. And while the logic is there for that, like it's understandable that a country that really caused a lot of pain and suffering, at least its leader and its military did, would want to distance itself from that. 
a lot of companies have changed things to match just a small example like that with Germany, where they have been cutting that symbol out of their games completely, even in international releases, so that those games will be allowed in other countries where those, that imagery is not allowed. Uh, and that's just a small example of that. But the thing with censorship is it always is something that keeps going, you know? Um, I don't think people would have expected this necessarily as much a few years ago when China was really starting to get into allowing American and other media. Uh, a lot of the idea was essentially that China is so big now and such a world superpower that they're not threatened by fiction, right? Uh, or fictional portrayals. But it's interesting because they are. Uh, this is a government that is very afraid of breaking the status quo, very afraid of anyone going against the government, especially when it comes to moral decision making. Because what it comes down to is if you are sitting there pondering moral choices and moral decisions, and you are choosing good or evil, it starts your brain thinking about, well, what's my government doing? What's my country doing? Especially with how political a lot of games have become and asking questions about power structures. It's interesting because that is something that the Chinese government would likely not want. The most ironic and silly thing to me, though, is the ban on any sort of same-sex relationship or any character that the gender is not immediately transparent. Um, I don't really get this one. Now, I know that the government of China is pretty hateful when it comes to the LGBTQ community and a lot of religious uh, examples outside of maybe Buddhism, right? And maybe Taoism. Uh, a lot of other examples of religion and lifestyle choice or sexuality even that are not the cookie cutter Chinese state government belief of what it should be are for some reason threatening to them. This is something I was kind of making fun of on Twitter because I find it interesting that this world superpower is so threatened by two men or two women kissing that they have to ban it. You know, this, this is a world superpower that wants to censor media, that wants to control the way that truth is perceived, and that is constantly buying more and more and more into worldwide governments and their companies. This is worth mentioning. There are a lot of video games that are partially owned or fully owned uh, in terms of their parent companies by China, by Chinese government-controlled companies. Because if you are a company operating in China, you need to abide by the government. This still this still holds true if you're a Chinese-based company that also does business worldwide. So let's say I own Company X. I am a Chinese CEO who owns Company X, born and raised in China, but we also own part of, let's say we buy part of Activision and we have a controlling stake in it. My cat is crying. Kitty, kitty, come here. With, um, in order to basically have that controlling stake, right? We are now able to make certain decisions that can affect that game worldwide, that can affect that property worldwide, not just in China. Because we now can push for creative control over a lot of aspects of that because we have that majority shareholder stock or we have the majority of the ownership of that company. This is not something that just affects China. I think the problem is that a lot of people are willing to turn the other way and not look at this because one, they're way too concerned about what America is doing at all times. And that's a worldwide thing. Like I've noticed that American politics matter way too much to a lot of people. I'm not saying they don't matter. I'm not a political channel, but what I'm saying is a lot of people are so focused in on the issues here in America that they don't see what's happening worldwide. And they don't see that how that can affect a global scale and a global market. I find it really sad that companies continue to bend the knee to this country. Again, Disney is the biggest one I can think of, actually thanking China for allowing them to film the Mulan live-action film in a province of China that was allegedly hosting a concentration camp, even though there is actual proof of this. Uh, and also, you know, a lot of other companies have been doing the same thing. You see this every time a major blockbuster releases and it has to be run through uh, Chinese censorship or Chinese media uh, censors and approvers 
in order to get approved in the country, in order to actually be shown there. Sometimes movies have to be edited down, sometimes they have to be completely cut out, but there is an actual pattern of sexism, phobic behavior, it, that's the best term, I think, to describe it that we have, and racism when it comes to these things. That country basically getting Disney to just almost completely cut Finn, John Boyega's character, who is black, by the way, out of the Star Wars The Force Awakens poster because black people are gross in China. That's kind of one of the one of the thoughts. And you know what? It's not me making that up. You can see that in the media that they've made. You can see that even in television commercials, including uh, the infamous commercial for laundry detergent where a black man is pushed into the laundry and then he comes out as a beautiful Chinese man. This is the attitude there, right? Anything that we don't accept, we don't have to change from. We can live in the past a thousand years ago with modern day technology as a world superpower and not change. And this is a huge problem I have with a lot of countries and America is one of them at times where people are so stuck in the past with certain things that they are unwilling to move forward or unwilling to allow tolerance. Just because if your religion disagrees with something or your mindset disagrees with something or whatever, I personally don't care, right? We all have our values. We all have our things that we believe. We all have our things that we hold to. And we all have our personal views on how things should be. Some of us have those more than others. Some of us are more lackadaisical and don't really care. But when it comes to the government telling you, hey, you are not allowed to look at this thing, immediately what is the first thing people try to do? They look at it. Why do you think things like Christianity spread like a wildfire throughout China? It's because they've tried to put it down. Every time that a book is banned, every time that a religion is banned, every time that a mindset is banned in any country, one of the biggest things the people do is seek it out. That's actually how America was created. It was anti-establishment uh, rhetoric, essentially. The idea of, no, 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 you can't tell me what to do. You're not in charge of me. People are very good with that. Uh, the problem is that as these countries get more and more and more of a tight iron grip, especially on their youth who are growing up, those young people are taught to see the world just as poorly as the 90-year-olds who run the government who could have been born in the year 1000 BC, and I wouldn't have been surprised. They are unable to flexibly change their values, and they are also unable to allow any sense of tolerance. In conclusion, this is not a pro-America video, really. It's not meant to be, but one of the things I really, really respect about America and European countries, mostly, is the idea of tolerance. This is a mindset that some countries have still been unable to grasp in current day, and a lot of individuals, even in Western society, aren't able to grasp that. It's also something that, undeniably, Eastern societies have had a harder time with. They are more traditionalist, whether it be Japan, China, or even the Middle East. A lot of those countries, if you study them, which I have in depth in college quite a bit, or if you happen to live there, you know that they are much more traditionalist, much more in the past. This is not always a bad thing, but when it hits a point where tolerance is just gone, and instead of saying, hey, look, we allow whatever, but I think this, we just ban the things that we disagree with, I think that's a really dangerous game to play, pun intended, with video games. I think that all that does is push people away from your state government, make them distrust you more. And I think that you should, I don't like telling my viewers what to do. You know, I'm not a big fan of that, but I would say that I think it is in your best interest to look into the things you're buying, to look into the companies you're purchasing from. Do they bend over backwards to these kinds of policies, you know, just to make an extra buck, especially the ones that are very quick to, you know, tweet out on Pride uh, or Black History Month or any of these things, right? Are they also some of the same companies that are just bow like bowing down to China and allowing those same people groups to be just completely cut out of media and minimized and basically fictionally killed off to pretend that they don't exist in the real world? 
it's something I try to pay attention to. It's not something you can always control, but I personally don't like throwing money behind cowards. And I think that these companies that want to have their cake and eat it too are as big, if not even a bigger problem than the Chinese government because they are fueling this. You know, they are fueling these mindsets and they are essentially throwing flames on the fire, flames on the fire, fuel on the fire in order to stoke what is essentially hateful attitudes that are stuck in the past. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm interested to hear. Um, no country, no group, no government is perfect, obviously. And again, this is not primarily a political channel. I find politics interesting to occasionally talk about, uh, but far too polarizing to bring up often because people are generally ready to be upset at them, uh, partially due to a worldwide media that constantly jams it down our throat. But this is an important thing that I think is very sad to see. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. I'm interested in your thoughts on government censorship, maybe uh, media censorship in general, stuff like that. And whether or not you think it's actually effective or backfires. I know there are com countries like North Korea where sadly this kind of thing is extremely effective in controlling the population. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Let me know. Have a fantastic day. Hopefully, uh, you know, do something fun. Think about something lighter. I don't cover super, super heavy topics that often, but this one kind of made me sad. As always, stay shway.